there's something special being released. Special revelation, special impartation, and maybe a special visitation. Now, we could all use that, amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Would you grab your swords, please, and go to Galatians chapter 6? One. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you are spiritual. Restore such a one in the spirit of what? Gentleness. Considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work or his own fruit. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load or his responsibility. Amen. Let him who taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be what? Deceived, because God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, that he will also what? Reap. For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit or the spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Now, what are we going to reap? It's called a harvest. It's called a what? Harvest. Now, a harvest comes in multiple ways. That's why God has set everything of the kingdom associated with seed and harvest. That's today. Seed and harvest. Amen? Everything is asso associated with seed and harvest. So if you sow into the flesh, you're sowing the seed into the corruption. That means you will reap corruption. Sowing means planting seed. Amen? So it's the same thing. So everything that revolves around the kingdom of God, everything Jesus talked about was seed and harvest. Everything. Go to, uh, so to sow and reap is the seed and harvest. Amen? Everything we receive, now listen to this. Everything we receive or what we reap we bring on ourselves. By reacting with emotional agreements or touch, uh, touching emotional agreements, if God puts sickness on you, then you can't take no medication to get cured. Does everybody get that? See, so, so many people think that God is putting the sickness on them. But God ain't putting the sickness on people. Because if God curses you with a sickness, you're dying. Amen? So most of the stuff that's happening to us is because we bring it on ourselves. But then people try to blame this or blame that or whatever. Or the, and then they go take medication. I mean, you know, when you get sick, we bring it on ourselves. Amen? Now, there are things that are inherited. Amen? But we still have the authority to break those curses off and be free from them. But they can be reset if we touch and agree with the same things that those curses were brought down on. You can be free from drugs and alcohol. And look at all the reaping we did when we were out there drug addicts, alcoholics, sowing in the flesh, reaping corruption. Everything that we did, we deserved. Does everybody get it? So because of that, we lost our families, we lost our children, we lost everything. Everything. Some of us were homeless, some of us were imprisoned. I was all the above. Everything. We brought it on ourselves because of choices. Does everybody get it? See, so the enemy is going to influence you to make a choice. So that you sow in the flesh? Because he wants to steal your harvest. Does everybody get it? He doesn't want you to have a good harvest. He'll do everything he can to prevent you from receiving a harvest. A harvest, look at in harvest there could be healing. There's prosperity. 
There's business. There's all kinds of things in a harvest. There's harvest of souls. How many people have been praying for, for salvation? But see, the enemy, his focus is to steal our harvest. You know, think about this. Go to, go to Genesis for a second. Genesis 3 and verse 6. When a woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate, or partook. Now, I'm not going to go into the depthness of this. But I want you to understand something that what occurred here is when she saw something that can make herself better than what God created her to be. Does everybody understand that? She saw something that she could be improving. But she was deceived, wasn't she? Because it was a lie. How can you improve something that God created? You can't. Amen? Now, go a little further. So when the woman, uh, verse 7, then the eyes of both of them were opened, but they were actually shut. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves and made themselves covering because their eyes were shut to the spiritual realm. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? Did God know where he was? Amen, he knew where he was. He wanted to know how Adam was going to respond. So, he said, I heard your voice in the garden. Why? Because he couldn't see him anymore. Because he became blinded to spiritual things. He could not see any more angels or anything to that degree. And he said, and I was afraid. Because I was naked, I hid myself. And the Lord said to him, who told you that you were naked? Have you t eaten from the tree which I, or partaken from the tree which I commanded you that you should not take? Then a man said, the woman. Here we go, we're cross-blame, amen? The woman you gave me. <laughs> yes. With me, she gave me of the tree and I partook. She enticed me. And the Lord said to the woman, what is this you've done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I partook or ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life, and I will put enmity or hatred between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. See, so the enemy knows about seed and harvest. His whole focus was to interrupt God's harvest. Does everybody understand that? Did he succeed temporarily? Amen. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. And in pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, because you've heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake, and toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. In sweat of your face you shall see, eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and dust you shall return. Hmm. And to Adam, God called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put his hand and take of the tree of life and eat and live forever, we have to throw him out of the garden. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned in every way to guard the way of the tree of life. See, the enemy influenced the choice of Eve 
and she influenced the choice of her husband, stealing their harvest, which was predestined by God Almighty. That battle continues to today. Amen? It still continues. There's a fight of over seed and over harvest. Go to 1 Corinthians 3. See, we're going in a reset right now. We're in the process of a reset. Everything is being reset economically, politically, governmentally. Everything is in a process of reset because the kingdom of God is coming in and God is preparing for the largest harvest ever as it hit this earth. We are in this time right now. In 1 Corinthians 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for even until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you're still not able. For you still are carnal, for where there is envy and strife and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men or human? For when one says, I am of, of Paul, and another says, I am of Apollo, Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul and who then is Apollos? But ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each one. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one. And each one receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field. You are God's building, according to the plan of God or grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what builds on it. For no other foundation could anyone lay that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear for the day will declare it. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what, it, of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved. Yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? One plants, another sows. Again, this is sowing and reaping, or it's the seed and harvest. Everything is associated with seed and harvest. Amen? Even your sowing of seed is an area, even labor. We say we labor unto the Lord. We're sowing seed. No matter every if you volunteer for something, you're sowing, you labor down to, if you're, unless you're a volunteer, if you're an individual that's always looking for something to be rewarded for everything you do, then you're not right with God. Because you're laboring unto the Lord. Now, don't get me wrong, a, a laborer is worth his pay. We have to work to bring finances to pay for things. But there's an area where God is asking you to sow something, whether it be financial or labor or time or something, to expand his kingdom. He's the one that will reward you. You don't have to worry about man rewarding. And he'll put something on somebody's heart or whatever. You just never know when or where. Amen? Because you're going to reap. No matter what, you're going to receive a harvest. And then that reaping is a constant buildup of something larger. There's always something larger coming. In Matthew 13, 18. Therefore, hear, hear. It says, doesn't, it says hear. Not listen, hear. Therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. And he who has received seed by the wayside, but he who receives seed on the stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world 
And the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. Wow. He who hears. Amen. Let's go a little further. And another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, or they slumbered or compromised, became lazy, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went away. But when the grain and the sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to them, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. The servants said to him, Do you want us to then go and gather them up? And he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in the bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. It's the same thing. Amen? So in this, we've got to understand that he's looking for stable ground. People that are steadfast, that are disciplined, that are consistent, that are loyal. He's trying to get to us at harvest. A harvest of healing, health, finances, harvest of salvation. He's trying to get us to a place where we understand that where there's a seed, there's a guaranteed harvest. It's guaranteed. It's promised by God Almighty. This is his rule of the kingdom, no matter what it is, no matter what you're doing. But the enemy, the devil, knows about the seed and harvest, and it's the foundational rule of the kingdom of Christ is seed and harvest. Everything is. Remember, everything we comes on ourselves is we be brought on ourselves. Amen. Go to first John chapter four, verse one. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, test those voices, whether they are of God or not. Test those humans. Because many false prophets have gone out into the world. They work for CNN and NSNBC and all those other ones. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is coming to the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus is coming to the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which we have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Now we know that the enemy lies, doesn't he? But you must discern that. Because there's false prophets out there that are proclaiming certain things. He says, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of Air. God is separating the left and the right. Amen. He says you'll put this left on the left and this right on the right. He's preparing those to reap their personal harvest and the harvest for the kingdom. So you are participating in also the harvest for the kingdom besides your own personal harvest. Only those that hear will receive because they follow and they plant. Amen? Go to Job 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God, which are angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? And so Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, 
one who fears God and shuns evil. So Satan answered the Lord and said, jo Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, around all that he has on every side? Have you blessed the work of his hands and his possessions have increased in the land? But now stretch out your hand and touch all that he has and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided them and took them away, indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Things were happening. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Did the fire of God come from heaven and destroy them? No. Because God said, I, he said, go ahead, Satan, I'll turn it over to you. God did not destroy it, but the servant assumed it was from God. Does everybody get it? Hallelujah. In verse 17, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels, and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, boy, he was having a tough day. Another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in the oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the world, wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. Hello. He did what? He fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return. And the Lord gave, and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job did not sin, nor charge God with the wrong. And what did God do? He restored him double fold. Does everybody know? See, Satan came to steal Job's harvest. Now, the first thing that granted access to Job was Job was afraid of losing his possessions. Fear was the open door. Does everybody get it? Fear. So because Job, Job feared God, but he was more afraid of losing his possessions, his family, his business. His children. Somebody understand that? He was afraid because of losing things because of what his children were doing also. He didn't know if they sinned or not. But he was afraid of loss of possession. See, that's an open door for the enemy. Everything you and I own, they're not ours. They're his. Everything. We are stewards, amen, of God's goods. Everything that he's blessed us with is from him because it's his. We can't take nothing with us when we leave. You might take it with you if you leave state, but you ain't going to take it home when you go to heaven. Amen? So Job lost it all, but God restored his harvest doublefold because he stood fast. Amen? And Psalm 149, verse 1. Praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song, and his praise in the assembly of saints. Are we in the assembly of saints? Praise God. Let all of Israel rejoice in their maker, and let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let all the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds, and the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. To execute what? 
vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind their kings with chains, their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. What are they doing? There is a written judgment against those who try to steal your harvest. That's the enemy, powers of darkness. God has given us authority to execute judgment on them. Does everybody understand that? To execute judgment on them. This honor have all his saints praised the Lord. All saints of authority of the Lord God Almighty have authority to execute judgment against harvest stealers. Only those who are right with God. Amen. If you're a person of uprightness, because a harvest is a righteous harvest. God has given you authority to execute judgment on them. You can pray against them every single day. Psalm 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, and than much fine gold. Sweeter also than the honey and of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned, and keeping them there is great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret faults, Lord. Keep back your servant from any presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless, and I shall be innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Judgments of the Lord are true and right, and servants are warned in keeping such things. There's great reward. Go to the book of Jude, please. Verse 14. Now Enoch the seven from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have con committed in an ungodly way, and all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers and complainers walking about according to their own lusts, they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Holy Spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost or in tongues, keeping yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but on others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory and exceeding joy, to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever and ever and ever. Go to Second Thessalonians 1, please. Remember, the Lord is going to come through the body of Christ first before he returns. So even right now, you are seeing God execute judgment through the body of Christ. There are many court cases that are judgment is being executed. People are being picked up and arrested and so forth all over. People are being exposed. CEOs are stepping down. All kinds of corruption is being exposed because God is executing. He's answering the prayers of his people. 
Remember, God is preparing for the largest harvest ever. Ever. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 3. Hallelujah. Everybody there? Let's speak it. 2 Thessalonians 1, 3. We are bound to give thank, uh, thanks God always for you, brethren, as is fitting because for your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abounds toward each other. So that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith and all your pers pers persecutions and tribulations that you endure, which is manifest evidence of the righteous judgment of God, that you may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which you also suffer. Since it is a righteous thing with God to repay with tribulation those who trouble you and give you who are troubled rest, with us when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on all those who do not know God. On those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. He shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes in that day to be glorified in his saints. And to be admired among all those who believe because our testimony among you was believed. Therefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of his goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and you in him according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God is repaying the enemy right now. Amen. He's repaying. He's also vindicating the body of Christ. He's vindicating you if you're standing right with God. Go to the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 1. Behold, in those days, at that time, when I bring back the captives of Judah and Jerusalem, has God done that? Yes. I will also gather all nations and bring them down to the valley Jehoshaphat. And I will enter into judgment with them. On account of my people, my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations. They have also divided up my land. Has that happened? Oh, yeah. They have cast lots for my people and given a boy as a payment for a harlot. And sold a girl for wine that they make, that they may drink. Indeed, what have you to do with me, O Tyra and Sidon and all of the coast of Philistia? Will you retaliate against me? But if you retaliate against me swiftly and speedily, I will return your retaliation upon your own head. Because you have taken my silver and my gold. Oh, that's going to be a big reset, isn't it? Everything will be reset with back by God's silver and gold because everything's going to be put under God. And I have carried into your temples my prized possessions. Also the people of Judah and the people of Jerusalem you have sold to the Greeks that you may remove them far from their boundaries or their borders. Behold, I will raise them up out of the place of which you have sold them. I will return your retaliation upon your own head and I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the people of Judah. And they will sell them to the Sabians, to the people far off. For the Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble and come, all you nations. And gather together all around. Because your mighty ones, um, ca cause your mighty ones to go down there. O Lord, let the nations be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there I'll sit at to judge all the surrounding nations. Put in the sickle, for the harvest is what? Ripe. Come, go down, for the wine press is full of the vats of overflowing, for their wickedness is great. 
Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon will grow dark. The stars will diminish their brightness. The Lord also will roar from Zion and utter his voice from the Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth will shake. But the Lord will be the shelter for his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then Jerusalem shall be holy and no alien shall ever pass through there again. Harvest. God will bring judgment on the harvest thieves. And I'm going to close at Romans 1, 18. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Is this happening now? Yes. <laughs> because what may be known of God is manifested in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the, children, the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged a natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of a woman, burned in their lust for one another. Men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which is due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their, in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, merciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice such things are deserving of death. Not only those who practice, but also those who do the same thing and approve such things that they practice will also be deserving of death. Just think about how many people voted for the people that, politicians that promote abortion and all same-sex marriage and all the other stuff that's offensive to God. And they just call it, oh, it's free will. Well, we don't have a free will. We, we have a free will to choose. <laughs> but there's either God's will or the devil's will, one or the other. Amen? So make sure that you are awake during this period of time. Battle against those who are trying to steal your harvest. Steal your healing. How about stealing your joy? <laughs> Amen? The enemy comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. But it's our responsibility to execute judgment on them because the wrath of God is coming, but it's our responsibility to bring execution of judgment before God's wrath. Amen? So that many souls can be saved. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise, and we thank you for your mercies and grace and faithfulness. We thank you for the authority you've given us. We thank you for the keys of the kingdom. And we thank you for the ability to bind, blind, mute, and deaf the powers of darkness, remove them from their seats and positions, and cast them down. So, Lord, let the impartation of your word today be refreshed in each and every one of us to bring us wisdom and discernment to see, to hear, and to follow. In Jesus' name. Anybody say amen?